We're solving systems of equations, and in today's lesson, we're going to be solving a two by two system, two variables, two equations, using the elimination method. So the first thing we should always ask ourselves, when should I use this method? This is a great method to use when variables are lined up, or they're easily lined up, they're easily manipulated, and or most variables have a coefficient other than one. This is a good method to use more so than graphing, more so than substitution. So the steps that you're going to use to solve, and you can refer to these as we go through the examples. The first thing you're going to do is write equations in standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. Then you're going to multiply one or both equations by a constant to get the same coefficients for one of the variables. Then you're going to add or subtract the equations to eliminate a variable. And I'm going to show you how I kind of combine steps two and step three, or steps two and three. The very last step is to substitute the value of the variable into one of the equations and solve for the remaining variable. So it looks like that last step in the substitution method. So let's get started on the first example for today. In this first example, so my first step, if I walk through my steps, are to write equations in standard form. And as you can see, these equations are in standard form. And when we do this, we get our variables lined up, right? Our x's are lined up, our y's are lined up, equals our constants are over here. Okay, so line them up, 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 line them up, 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 get everything lined up. And then we're going to add the next step says to multiply one or both equations by a constant to get the same coefficients for one of the variables. So your ultimate goal, okay, and this is how I combine steps two and step three, what you want is the same coefficient, the same coefficient in front of a variable, the same variable in both equations, one's positive and one's negative, okay? So what I like to see, what your goal is, is for example, if you look at these x terms in my first equation, and I'm going to label this equation 1 and equation 2, in equation 1, I have a positive 2 as the coefficient for x. In my second equation, I have a negative 2 in my coefficient for x. And what we're going to do is basically add these two equations together. Okay, but what I like to do is I like to combine steps 2 and step 3 step two and step three. So what I'm going to do is add these two equations together. What ends up happening, you're going to add all your x's, you're going to add your y's, and you're going to add your constants. The x's get eliminated. Positive two and negative two is zero. Zero times x is just zero. We've eliminated the x term. And now I'm going to combine negative five y plus three y, that's negative two y, equals, and now I'm going to combine my constants, right? I'm just adding. 18 minus 14 is positive 4, and now I can just solve for y. When I divide both sides by negative 2, I get y equals negative 2. So now we're back to that last step that we were in when we used the substitution method. When I've solved for the value of one variable, I can take that value and plug it into any equation I see, and solve for the value of the other variable. So in this first equation, I'm just picking one, okay? 2x minus five, I'm gonna replace y with parentheses, right? I'm, I'm substituting this in. So I'm taking y out, I'm rewriting my entire equation, and I'm gonna put what y equals in that parenthesis, in those parentheses. y equals negative two, so now I've got that. Now I've created one equation, one variable, I can solve for the value of that variable. So I get 2x, negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10 equals 18. When I subtract 10 from both sides, I get 2x equals 8. When I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 4. And that is my solution for negative 2. I can write it as an ordered pair, right? x comma y. Let's move on to example number 2. Okay, each of these examples gets kind of increasingly difficult. So in example number two, one of the first things I notice is my equations are not lined up, so I need to manipulate them. And um, you don't necessarily always have to write in standard form, but it is just pretty much common practice to do so. So in equation one, my equation is in standard form, 4x plus y equals 16. 
right? But equation two is not in standard form. I need to manipulate this equation and put it in standard form. What do I need to do? I need to move this y to the other side. So I need to add y to both sides. So I get 2x plus y equals 10. So in this situation, okay, this is where I combine steps two and step three, okay? And I like to give you the steps because this is kind of the way you see it, um, but this is how I combine these steps, okay? Remember, I want the same but opposite coefficients, okay? If I have the same coefficients, right? I, I do here, right? One y, one y. I have the same coefficients. You are going to essentially subtract these equations. How do I subtract these equations, I distribute a negative one into every single term in the second equation, okay? So I'm actually gonna rewrite this whole thing down here, okay? Just so you can see it. So I've got four X plus Y equals 16. When I subtract that second equation, it's like multiplying that entire equation by negative one, right? So I get negative 2x minus 1y or minus y equals negative 10, right? Everything becomes opposite of what it was. And now I have created my two equations with the same but opposite coefficients. And now we're going to combine those. The positive y and negative y, that is the variable that gets eliminated. They cancel out. And now let's combine everything else. 4x minus 2x is 2x equals 16 minus 10 is positive 6. When I solve for x, I get x equals 3. I've solved for the first variable, and now we're back to the very last step in elimination and substitution. And we're going to plug in, if x equals 3, anywhere I see x, I can replace it with 3. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, which one should I replace with three. I'm gonna go with um, this equation right here, this top equation, okay? And you can plug it in in any equation. If it's the point of intersection, it's the point they share, it doesn't matter which equation you plug it into. You could have plug it into one of the original equations, an equation that's been manipulated, it doesn't matter, You're, you will get the same value for y. So four, I'm gonna replace x with three, plus y equals 16. 4 times 3 is 12, plus y equals 16. When I subtract 12 from both sides, I get y equals 4. So my solution is 3, 4. And that's how I'd write it. Let's move on to example number 3. With example number 3, I have two equations, two variables. I have the system of equations. My first step says to write equations in standard form. Are both of these equations in standard form? At first glance, you might think that they are. What I'm gonna do is label these equation one and equation two. I'm gonna rewrite equation one right here. And then I want you to look closely at equation two. Is that equation in standard form? It is not. I have negative five y plus six x. I need to rewrite it. Six x minus five y equals negative 41. And all I've done to rewrite it is move that x term first, y term next, right? ax plus by equals c. When you do that, when you move terms around, just remember the sign in front goes with the term. So now I'm looking for equations that have the same but opposite coefficients, right? And you're gonna see how I like to combine steps two and step three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at each variable okay, or set of um, terms, right? So each individual variable. So first let's look at our x terms. I have a coefficient of three and a coefficient of six. The least common multiple between three and six is six. So here's an example where I have this three that actually, if I multiply it by two, it'll be six. If I look at my y variables, I have a four and a five. The least common multiple of four and five is 20. So I could multiply four by five to get 20 and I could multiply five by four to get 20. Well, what you wanna do is do the least amount of work possible. 
if my goal is to create the same but opposite coefficients, I'm just going to multiply this entire equation by 2, right? I can't just multiply the, you know, 3x by 2, right? What I do, if I'm going to keep my equation balanced, I have to do it to every single term, like the entire equation, right? What's on the left and what's on the right, i got to multiply it by 2. This is where I like to combine steps 2 and step 3. My goal is to create, I like to create the same but opposite coefficients. So what I'm going to do is instead of multiplying by 2, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So now let's rewrite it. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. 4y times negative 2 is negative 8y. 25 times negative 2 is negative 50. And now I'm going to rewrite that second equation. What I have now done is created equations where I have the same but opposite coefficients in front of the x. So now when I add these equations, I can eliminate my x variables. Negative 8 and negative 5 is negative 13y equals negative 50 and negative 41 is negative 91. So now when I solve for y, I divide both sides by negative 13 and I get y equals 7. So then my last and final step is the same as the last step in, for substitution. I'm going to take the 7 and I'm going to plug it into any one of these equations and solve for x. So I'm actually going to plug it into this equation right here. Okay, so 3x plus 4 times y, well y is 7, so that's 4 times 7, equals 25. And now we're just going to solve for x. So 3x, 4 times 7, is 28, equals 25. When I subtract 28 from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 3. And when I divide both sides by 3, I get x equals negative 1. So my solution is negative 1, 7. Let's move on to example number four. In example number four, I have two equations, two variables. I have a system of equations. And um, my variables are lined up. They're both in standard form. I have equation one here and equation two here. Do I have the same but opposite coefficients? I do not. So now let's look at each variable or set of variables um, individually. Let's look at our x's first. The least common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6. Okay, I could multiply 2 by 3 to get 6, and I could multiply 3 by 2 to get 6. So in this case, you know, I'd have to multiply both equations by something to get a common coefficient. Let's look at our y variables. 3 and 4. The LCM of 3 and 4 is 12. So I'd have to multiply 3 by 4 to get 12 and 4 by 3 to get 12. So in both of these cases, I would actually have to multiply both equations by a constant to get the same but opposite coefficients. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to eliminate the x variables. Okay, The least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. And that will eliminate the x variable. So what I'm going to do here is multiply this entire equation by 3. I'm going to multiply this entire equation by negative 2. This is how I combine steps 2 and step 3. Okay. My goal is to create the same but opposite coefficients. Okay. So when I do that, let's multiply 3 into every term in this first equation. 2x times 3, that's going to be 6x. Negative 3y times 3 is negative 9y, and 20 times 3 is 60. Let's multiply every term in our second equation by negative 2. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. 4y times negative 2 is negative 8y. Negative 38 times negative 2 is positive 76. Now I've got two equations, and I've got the same but opposite coefficients for my x variables. Those get eliminated. Now I'm just going to combine. So in this case, I'm always adding, right? That, that step in um, our steps, let's see, that was step number three, add or subtract. I always add because I multiply 
to get the same but opposite coefficients, okay, when I have to multiply by something. So in this case, we're adding these two equations. So negative 9y and negative 8y is negative 17y. And then 60 plus 76 is 136. When I divide both sides by negative 17, 136 divided by negative 17, I get y equals negative 8. And now we're on to our last and final step. I'm trying to change colors here. Let's see. Let's do this one. I can plug, it, plug negative 8 into any equation. So I'm actually going to plug it into that um, equation number 1. 2x minus 3 times whatever y is, which is negative 8, equals 20. And now we're just solving for x. Negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24. So 2x plus 24 equals 20. When I subtract 24 from both sides, I get 2x equals negative 4. When I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals negative 2. And I'm going to write my solution as an ordered pair. So I get negative 2, negative 8. And that's my solution. Just remember to watch out for answers involving special solutions. If I were to get something like this, 0 equals 0, my, where my variables get eliminated, and I'm left with a statement that is true, that is infinitely many solutions, right? So just remember that. That's infinitely many solutions. Whoa. And you can also write that as an infinity symbol I've seen, all real numbers. And then don't forget if you end up with a statement, for example, like 3 equals 15, so your variables get eliminated and you end up with a statement that is not true, that is not true, your answer is no solution. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you're working through your problems on your assignment. That concludes your notes for solving a system of equations using the elimination method. I hope it was helpful.